In Acts chapter 22, Paul had been taken into protective custody by the Roman tribune in charge of the Roman garrison adjacent to the temple. The tribune, Claudius Lysias, wanted to find out exactly why Paul was being so vehemently opposed by his fellow Jews. So the next day he released Paul from protective custody, and he ordered the chief priests and all the members of the Sanhedrin to assemble. The tribune then brought Paul in and had him stand before the assembled gathering of Israel's leaders. Paul addressed the Sanhedrin by looking directly at them and telling them, My brothers, I have fulfilled my duty to God in all good conscience to this day. Upon hearing this, the high priest, Ananias, ordered those who were standing near Paul to strike him in the mouth. After the men had done so, Paul turned and said to the high priest, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. You sit there daring to judge me according to the law, and yet you yourself violate the law by commanding that I be struck. Paul had not yet been convicted of any wrongdoing, nor was he a prisoner on trial. The Roman tribune had fully released Paul from protective custody. Paul had voluntarily come to this hearing of his own choosing. It was not lawful for the high priest or anyone else to order that Paul be struck. Even though he was the high priest, Ananias had abused his authority in ordering that Paul be physically struck. In addition, Paul was a Roman citizen, which entitled him to the privileges of legal due process and exemption from humiliating forms of punishment. This would include the high priest's order that Paul be punched in the mouth. Israel was a client state of the Roman government, and the Roman tribune, Claudius Lysias, had ordered this hearing. It was therefore under Roman jurisdiction, which meant that whatever legal authority the Sanhedrin might possess, it nevertheless must follow due process and respect the rights of Rome's citizens. This is why Paul spoke up and called the high priest a hypocrite. As Israel's leader, the high priest claimed to support the law, but he broke the law when it came to Paul's legal rights. In telling Ananias that God would also strike him, Paul wasn't merely being insulting. He was simply recounting the teaching that Jesus himself had taught in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus had taught his disciples, For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite, first remove the plank from your own eye, and then you'll be able to see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Ananias presumed to accuse Paul of violating the law, Yet he himself had broken the law through his illegal treatment of Paul. This is why Paul told him, God will judge you, you whitewashed wall. Jesus had said something similar in rebuking the scribes and Pharisees. He told them, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. The prophet Ezekiel had also written about unstable, poorly built buildings being covered with whitewash to make them look deceptively beautiful, thereby concealing their poor construction. The scribes and Pharisees prided themselves on having an outward appearance of righteousness. Yet Jesus pointed out that inwardly they were insincere hypocrites. In calling Ananias a whitewashed wall, Paul was essentially calling him a hypocrite. Those who were standing nearby Paul said to him, how dare you insult God's high priest? Paul hadn't yet realized who Ananias was. He replied to the Sanhedrin, Brothers, I did not realize that he was the high priest, for it is written, Do not speak evil about the ruler of your people. In saying this, Paul was quoting from the book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 28, which warns, You shall not revile God, nor curse a ruler of your people. Paul had not realized who Ananias was, and probably had never seen him before. Paul had been away from Jerusalem for over 25 years, living and planting churches among the Gentiles. Ananias had been appointed high priest in AD 47, long after Paul had left Jerusalem. He served as Israel's high priest from AD 47 to AD 59. Josephus writes of Ananias, describing him as a violent, proud, gluttonous, and greedy man who stole from the people to enrich himself. Ananias was later murdered by his own people just prior to the Jewish war in AD 66. 
in this sense, Paul's statement about God striking Ananias has a prophetic sense. Notice how Paul didn't hesitate to confront Ananias' unjust and inappropriate behavior. Even so, by saying what he said to Ananias, Paul had no intention of showing disrespect to the office of high priest. By acknowledging his error here and not recognizing who Ananias was, Paul is showing to the assembled council that he respects and honors God's laws. But what Paul has said was true enough. Even though he was the high priest, Ananias had broken the law by ordering Paul to be hit in the mouth. Paul hadn't been convicted of breaking any laws, and he was entitled to a fair hearing. We're reminded in this of the illegal trial of Jesus. At Jesus' trial, held in secret and at night, the high priest Annas asked Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I spoke openly to the world. I always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where the Jews always meet. And in secret, I've said nothing. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. Indeed, they know what I said. In saying this, Jesus was pointing out the irony that they were illegally trying him, not in an open public trial, but secretly and at night. This is why Jesus said, In secret, I have said nothing. Jesus had never said anything secret, and so he wasn't about to begin here in this secret, illegal proceeding. If they wanted to know what Jesus taught, they could inquire legally and openly, the legal proper way, by interviewing witnesses in a legal court of law, not by interrogating Jesus in a secret, illegal proceeding. By answering them the way he did, Jesus was pointing out their insincerity and hypocrisy. The Sanhedrin weren't at all interested in learning what Jesus taught. They just wanted to quickly force through the baseless charges that were against Jesus through this illegal trial. They didn't uphold or show any respect for the law at all. They were clearly lawbreakers who had no regard for either justice or due process. After Jesus had answered the high priest this way, one of the officers who stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, How dare you answer the high priest like that? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, prove it. But if I spoke truly, then why did you strike me? As with both the Lord Jesus and the Apostle Paul, the Sanhedrin had shown no respect for justice or due process of law. Even though both Jesus and Paul were treated harshly and unjustly, neither had caved in to a spirit of coercion or intimidation. They simply spoke honestly and truly. This is an example for us as well. Jesus taught his disciples to forgive their enemies. But this doesn't mean that we ignore injustice or that we call evil good. The scriptures clearly warn exactly the opposite. Isaiah writes, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Instead, Jesus taught in Matthew chapter 18, verse 15, Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you've gained a brother. In other words, Jesus teaches us to confront those who sin against us. If they repent, then we are to forgive them and be reconciled. This is Jesus' proper order for forgiveness. The goal of extending forgiveness is always reconciliation. Yet there can be no true reconciliation without sincere repentance, either before God or toward others. This is what Paul means in exhorting Christians to speak the truth in love. It's never hateful to speak the truth in love. Just the opposite. When we fail to lovingly warn or confront others of their wrongdoing, we do them a disservice. Sometimes the most unloving and uncaring thing to do is to say and do nothing at all. James writes that to the person who knows to do what is right and doesn't do it, to him it is sin. Let's learn what it means to speak the truth in love. As followers of Christ, let's learn to stand up for what is true and to respectfully communicate that truth to the world all around us. Music